Hi there YouTube, I'm trying a new format today for my uh, channel and this is what I call Teardown TV and basically I'm gonna try every week I have I, I've you know looked around in my room and I have figuratively tons of electronics so I thought every week I would go through and take apart something for you guys to enjoy so this week I'll give you a hint on what I got this guy fits in it and it's basically an old three and a half, half inch floppy that I pulled from an HP Pavilion desktop circa 2000, early 2000s. And so the interesting thing about this is there's actually no faceplate because it mounts to the front bezel. But other than that, <clears throat> it's a Mitsumi model and made in Taiwan. So let's just get right into the teardown. So first thing, let's remove the top here. You'll notice there's actually some um, mounting tabs on the side here, two on each side, that you need to get in there with a knife just to pry off enough so you can get this guy off here. There we go. Ah. Okay. It's actually really interesting mechanisms. I've taken apart a lot of floppy drives in my day. But um, basically, they're all very similar um, with a front-loading caddy, which when you insert the disc, it actually lowers the, um, the drive bay and clamps these fingers down onto the top side of the drive in order to, well, top and bottom, in order to actually access the data as um, the motor spins the spool. Let's take the disc out first. Okay. Now, if you can see right in here, there are two cables which, uh, Ziff, well, actually, no, they're not Ziff, uh, two friction fit cables which actually go to the heads right here. So let's take those guys out. I just hate this, I don't have fingernails. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Okay, with those out, let's see. Next, I'm going to go for removing the bottom plate if I can. Okay, gotcha. So it looks like you're going to have to remove a few... Oops. Oh, well, lost that screw. <laughs> a few screws in order to remove this bottom metallic plate here. Looks like it just slides up. Let's see. Oh, there you go. It slides back to the right and then you can just simply lift this guy off. I'm actually a little bit surprised. I've, I, I, I've mentioned that I've taken apart a few of these floppy drives, but there's only a small controller board in this one. The other ones I've taken apart generally is a huge controller board with lots of passives. Here you can actually see that um, there's basically one Mitsumi made. It's actually interesting. They made their own controller chip. Um, Mitsumi uh, controller chip, and from what I can count, like four or five passives, six passives, and that's pretty much it, and it looks like some capacitors and the crystal for the controller chip, which is right in here. It's kind of hard to see. We'll get a better view once I take the sucker out. Okay, so now let's remove the, um, the drive motor itself. and the driver board. <clears throat> okay. There we go. Okay. Looks like we're going to have to go ahead and remove... Ah, darn it. I love this. Every screw in here 
is a standard Phillips, and then they go and throw a Torx in there. <laughs> Let's see. That's why I love. I got this um this multi bit driver set, and it is awesome. Just you know, having all in one place every screwdriver that you could possibly need. So, let's see. Okay, got that out of the way now. Hopefully that's the last we see of those. And the motor. And this guy is a stepper. It's a worm, worm gear in order to drive the head back and forth. Let's just remove that sucker. That should just pop out. Yep. So here we go. All the electronics. And, yeah, as I said, there's really almost no passives on this board. I, I've seen earlier floppy drives. I mean, the complexity of this, this is a later model, like 2000, uh, early 2000s or so. So, I mean, I, I guess they engineered all the complexity out of it to make it as simple to manufacture as possible. And this part is the uh, spindle motor. And it's just one of your standard, um, basically like a uh, electronically driven, almost like a stepper motor per se. It's a uh, multi-phase and this part is the actual spindle head and it has the magnet which um, basically uh, surrounds these coils and that's how it's driven. Usually there's a Hall effect sensor, some sort of magnetic sensor in order to determine the positioning of the disc so that it knows which coils to fire and I'm not really seeing anything. The only thing, it could be this chip right here, it's really hard to see but um, I would assume that would be the Hall effect sensor since it's very close to the um, the edge of the spindle. And basically you have your standard um, tack button, well they're not tacked, but they're spring loaded buttons or switches which determine disc position, whether a disc is inserted, whether the right protection switch is enabled or not. And your motor controller as well as your status LED. And that's pretty much all that makes up the, uh, the circuit board here, other than this uh, single, um, like a photo interrupter, which will actually tell you if this head is lined up in the back here, whether it's in its starting position or not. That's just for relative positioning, so that the controller knows where, you know, the um, the head is basically if it's at the start position or not. And you have your standard um, data and power connectors. Nothing really all that uh, surprising there. That's pretty much it for the electronics. <clears throat> let's get to the mechanism. That's always the interesting part. So let's see, how do I get this sucker off? Uh, man, they really screwed that in tight. Not like I'm ever really going to ever use <laughs> a floppy drive again. I mean, I haven't used a floppy disk since, oh god, I don't even know, middle school. <laughs> so let's see if um, I can get this guy off. I don't really care about ruining this. I'm probably just going to, who knows, do something fun with it. Like I've seen people um, hack into the controller circuitry and then get it to play like you know, the Imperial March song or whatever. So, that might be kind of cool to do, but let's get this sucker apart first. Pretty much all that's left is the, um, the dust flap pretty much here just to keep the front closed. <coughs> let's see. And just a lot of springs. It's actually... It's more fascinating than the electronics is the mechanics of a lot of devices. For me, at least. There we go. So many springs. Not nearly as bad as if you've ever taken part of VCR. Maybe one day if I can get a VCR. 
if I can find <laughs> an old VCR, I can do a teardown for you guys, but I'm afraid that video might be like two hours long. <laughs> Those guys are interesting to take apart, let me tell you that. Just trying to see how the heck I can get in there. It's always like a puzzle trying to get these guys apart, you know? No matter how many I've taken apart, it takes a few seconds for me to figure out how to actually crack it in there. So it looks like this piece should slide out, but there must be something holding it in. Well, let's get the head off first, I guess. Darn it, Torx. <clears throat> See, I knew it wasn't the last of them. At least they didn't throw security screws at me. I hate those guys. Vengeance. Okay, here's the first half of the head, the top half. It's basically just a, um, essentially like an electromagnet that passes over the top of the, um, the floppy drive, and it basically writes the data onto the top half. Nothing all that complicated there. It's not all that different than a um, than a like a tape head. Okay, let's see how you get this guy off. Uh, see, for the bottom one, there's a single screw holding it on there, but you need to remove this top part. Wow. <laughs> okay, did not expect that to happen. Pretty much that was just like the one linchpin holding everything together. And so pretty much... <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay, that's a part. <laughs> so pretty much all we got left is this one screw, and that's it. I always like tearing things down to completion, like to the very bottom levels of of what you can tear down so that there's absolutely nothing left. But unfortunately, that usually means that you cannot put it back together. At least it's very hard to. So here's basically the end of the, um, the bottom chassis plate. And that's it. And you got the bottom read right head, which is pretty much the same as the top one. And that's pretty much it. So it only took about 12 and a half minutes to get that sucker apart. So um, I'll see what else I can dig up. Maybe something a little bit longer. You know, if you guys have any feedback, um, you know, just leave it in the comments below. And I'll try to do this thing every week regularly. Maybe get a post by Friday or Saturday after some editing. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you know, I just want to keep this format chill and. You know, just like hanging out, taking stuff apart, you know, like I do with my friends. So I'll see you guys next week. Adios.